Hi everybody, I'm Nexus and I'm super excited today because um, I've been thinking a lot about Bokashi. I live here in New York City in the middle of the pandemic um, epicenter and currently we don't have any compost. City compost has been suspended due to budget constraints, which totally makes sense. Um, they probably need those staff members to help move the dead over at Hearts Island or um, help in other ways to alleviate the toll that the pandemic's taking on our city. Um, in the meantime, though, here we are. We're all at home. We're still making food waste. We're still making um, meals, taking care of our families and things like that. And if we were able to compost, a whole bunch of food would not be going into the waste stream where it all just decompose and turn into methane gas and other things that are not great for our climate. Uh, we can't compost them. Of course, I live in an apartment, so I can't have a compost pile. Um, I started looking into different kinds of ways to compost indoors. There's a number of different ways. Um, there is a cardboard box method that the New York Times recently covered that um, a city in Japan came up with that apparently is fairly low scent. I, however, have a dog and I know my dog will dig through any kind of open back box that I have. Um, I also have a 10 year old um, and uh, I produce a lot of extra waste food, some of which I feed to my dog, some of which I just have to end up throwing away. Things get lost in the back of the fridge. I try to do everything I can, but I'm just a human being. So enter Bokashi. Bokashi, um, oh, a second method you can do indoors is you can buy what they call an indoor composter, an indoor electric composter. They tend to cost about $300. And what they do is in the course of four to 12 hours, they take your food scraps and they desiccate them using heat and air. So it's like a fast dehydration project product. Um, which basically, you know, uh, sterilizes the food scraps, um, dehydrates them, and then when you throw them in a compost pile or um, into a planter or your garden, they decompose super duper fast, which is one really great solution too. Um, I felt like it was a little bit expensive. I didn't like the fact that I couldn't compost any kind of meat um, waste. Uh, with the New York City compost system, I can compost my bones, uh, leftover <laughs> skins of uh, fish that my son didn't want to eat, and I can't feed to the dog because he's allergic to fish. Um, you know, gristle, <laughs> eggshells. Uh, when you fry bacon and you dry it on the paper towels and the oil goes into the paper towel or the newsprint, the city compost can take all of that. Um, but obviously you can't get a home compost system to take most of that stuff. I learned about third way, Bokashi. I first learned about Bokashi when I was working at Grow NYC, an environmental organization here at New York. I was having a chat with one of my coworkers um, she's an incredible person who helps run the compost division and we both love to ferment things. And we were talking about our mutual love of fermentation and culture. And she told me about Bokashi and she said it was this Japanese um, way to basically ferment your, or culture, grow culture on your food scraps. This um, is done in an anaerobic environment. Anaerobic means that it's completely sealed off from air. If something's sealed off from air, that means it has no stink because it's all completely contained, right? Um, there's no heat involved with traditional composting. Heat is created and actually you end up losing about 50% of the nutrients from your food waste that go into your hot compost pile just through the act of comp comp decomposition in the compost pile, right? So heat is happening. And when the heat happens from the microbes building up, 
and breaking down the food, uh, methane gases escape, carbon dioxide escapes, and also nitrogen also sometimes runs off from your compost piles. It's one of the reason why compost isn't a great solution to things like dairy farms and pig manure pits and the things that really contribute huge amounts of methane gas to climate change, not always mitigated by composting. And so that's a big problem with uh, animal feces. Well, Bokashi, what you do is you put everything into a bucket in layers. You sprinkle the layers in between with bran that has been inoculated with certain kinds of uh, microorganisms and you let it ferment. And once it's done fermenting, it just sort of smells like vinegar. And then you dump it in with some dead soil and it will quickly decompose into not only soil, but also soil that is full of microbes. And microbes are the things that make your plants happy, healthy, and alive. Um, it is a fact of life that diversity, eco-diversity on all levels is what sustains us and makes us strong. A diverse ecosystem is a strong ecosystem. A gut that has diverse bioflora is a healthy gut. And plant soil that has lots of different kinds of happy bacteria in it and fungi and other kinds of weird microplantoids and things, that's what makes a happy, happy plant. So. I ordered a Bokashi system. It also cost me a couple of hundred dollars, um, but the difference is my Bokashi system will actually take meat scraps. And in fact, they also have a Bokashi system that will handle pet waste. Now, I am not going about to start bringing home my, my dog's pet waste. I, I pick it up in a biodegradable bag and I, I throw it away in the city municipal um, uh, uh, g garbage. I, I have my limits of where I'll go, ecologically speaking, so I'm probably not gonna start bringing his poop home to Bokashi. However, if I had a cat, I certainly would consider getting a Bokashi set for that. This is not sponsored in any way. I spent my own money. <coughs> so this is my Bokashi set. I got it from Bokashi Cycle. They have this really excellent on the side here. You can see they gave me an entire poster on how to do it. So I'm gonna, when I cut this apart, I'm actually gonna try. That's what happens. When you have technical difficulties. Okay. Sorry for the change in angle. Okay, anyway, it's got this great poster on the side that tells you how to do everything. So that is super great, and it's clearly meant to be kept and used because it's really nicely pasted onto the side there, and it's on pretty good paper, too, that seems to be glossy. All right. Bokashi bucket. Now, this company, Bokashi Cycle, usually does their kits in five gallon buckets. Um, I have some physical stuff that I struggle with um, in terms of uh, strength and uh, some chronic pain stuff from an episode of Lyme disease that I suffered through in 2019. So I got what they call their micro kit, but the micro kit is a three and a half gallon bucket. So when this bucket is full of food scraps, it'll weigh about 35 pounds. The five gallon bucket will weigh about 55 pounds. So um, in some ways, this is which size bucket you choose to use is dependent on your physical capabilities and also how many people are in your family. A larger bucket is gonna take a little longer to fill up. Uh, which means you don't have to dump it as often. 
uh, but it's also going to be heavier. <laughs> so it all kind of just depends on your own um, needs. So I'm super excited. Let's see what's in here. Great. So these are my Bokashi Culture Mix. Now, this is the brand that's been inoculated with EM. EM stands for Effective Microorganisms. And they are the organisms that will help break down and ferment our food scraps. Um, it's mostly bacterium, I believe, probably some fungi in there because when I was reading it, sometimes a white mold will um, appear on your Bokashi and they said that's fine, that's a normal thing. This is Diesel, he's here to sniff. <laughs> Thank you, Bunny. So here's the Bokashi brand. Now you can make this, um, there's recipes for it. I just felt like I just wanted to buy it for the first time. Um, so my Bokashi, one Bokashi bucket is full of these. Um, now they give you two buckets because once you fill up one bucket, you're still going to be making food waste. <laughs> and while that bucket finishes fermenting, uh, you'll need another bucket to put your other food waste. So this particular company is really cool. Their lids, this is why I picked them. Their lids, you see, it actually screws off. So I know it'll be really, really scent sealed, um, which is what I want in an apartment. So I ordered a year's supply of brand. Um, you can pay a little bit less. Um, you can pay $139 and they'll give you two or three months supply of brand and then you can choose to make your own brand if you choose. Um, you still have to buy um, the EM, the effective microorganisms, <laughs> to make that. And that would be another video if we ever talk about that. So they gave me a little Tupperware container. I think that's just to hold my excess brand. There is my how to set up. Um, get assembly. Now, Bokashi, <laughs> my Bokashi scoop. <laughs> Thanks guys. Um, okay, so this is my marvelous little thing. You can see on the bottom here, the bucket, this is the bucket. It has got a hole in it. Now, food waste is notoriously wet. <laughs> It has juices and things like that. So you do, might, if you have excess juice, you're gonna have to drain off your Bokashi. And that's why this has this wonderful little spigot. The reason I got this set, uh, there are how-tos on how to make your own Bokashi uh, kits, uh, but I'm hoping that by buying this one, I don't get an infestation of white fly larva between my bucket walls, which is what happened to someone who built their own kit. Now, if I had a house, and I lived in the burbs and I could just like rinse out my bucket and or stick it out in the yard or in the garage and not have it in my house, that would be fine. Um, but that's not the case here. So this is a single bucket. We're gonna assemble their spigot onto there. And then afterwards, we will put on this wonderful little drainage tray that they have. You can see on the bottom it has um, some feet on it. So when it goes inside the bucket, it sits above the holes. Okay, so the bokashi, the garbage, the waste, food waste will be held above. There's a space for water for excess liquid to gather below these little holes. And I'm actually going to also line this with a little piece of um, maybe a little bit of a uh, paper towel or a um, paper bag like my Bokashi brand came in, uh, just as another mitigation. The cool thing about this liquid, and one of the many reasons why I am really interested in this particular kind of technology to take care of my house waste, is that I'm an avid, avid plant grower. I have five citrus trees, an avocado tree. This is my coffee plant. I feed these guys every single, every other week. And uh, 
Fertilizer is expensive. We have a pandemic going on. I can't be certain that um, I'll be able to get fertilizer, but I can make fertilizer. And the Bokashi juice is a really excellent soil conditioner for your plants. It's very high in N4, which is the best kind of nitrogen available to your plants. And when it comes time to harvest that liquid and ferment it into use for our plants, I'll do a whole video about that. Okay, so I've put on the spigot. They break, give you easy instructions on how to do that. The rubber stopper is on the inside. This is on the outside. I'm really impressed so far with the quality of this kit. Um, they have, everything's really solidly made um, so far. Um, and everything is sealed really tight. Um, so now that my spigot is on, we have this excellent drainage plate. So that will go in. I've been saving um, some food scraps so we could start off with our very first Bokashi uh, add-on. Now, this is the press plate. When you put your, your um, food scraps in, you want to get as much air out of it as possible. So I'll be able to push this down with my hand to get the air out. And then I will screw this top on. And you can see it has actual um, threads on the side, which then will um, keep everything airtight. Um, it's recommended that you only open your Bokashi bucket every couple of days. Less is better. Um, so if you can, keep a compost bucket on your kitchen counter. And when it's full, you put it into your Bokashi bucket. Um, this will just, the less you open it and disturb it, the better. Again, it, this is an anaerobic process, so you don't want oxygen getting in there. You don't want to stir it up. You want everything to be compressed and flat, just like when you make pickles. If you're a home uh, pickler at all, um, or you've ever canned anything at home, or even if you've just opened up a can of for example, canned fruit, fancy canned fruit that you've gotten, you know, or something like that, you'll see that everything is packed in tight with no air in between it. And that is exactly what we're going to do with our um, juice. Now, the reason why there's a spigot on here is because foodstuffs are inherently wet. And so you'll get excess liquid. Now, this excess liquid doesn't smell great, apparently. However, it's incredibly good, healthy for plants. Um, it's full of NP nitrogen four, which is the best kind of nitrogen for uptake um, in terms of plants health. Um, it's also, it's full of the microorganisms that were in that anaerobic process. Those guys decompose, and then you, before it would happen, before you use it, you actually ferment it a little bit. Um, and when you ferment it a little bit, what happens is it gets colonized by the wild bacteria in the air, most of which is great soil bacteria. This liquid is exactly right. It's what they love. So you ferment it for a couple of days and you add it in dilution to your water and it introduces healthy microorganisms into your plant system at home. Uh, as somebody who collects plants um, and is an avid home indoor gardener, um, I need a lot of fertilizer. This is a really good way for me to get that um, without spending any money. Um, also, it means I don't have to go out and forage in a pandemic for fertilizer, which I think sounds great. Um, I can collect a lot of different plants. For example, this one is my coffee plant. Isn't she healthy? Isn't she gorgeous? She hasn't made, she hasn't blossomed yet, but I'm hoping this is the year. She's three years old now. And uh, I hope she blossoms because I would really love to get some coffee beans. Okay, so let me get a little bit of paper. I'll be right Okay, so uh, my very first layer, I'm just gonna put a little bit of brown paper down there. This is just so that when I finally empty my Bokashi into my indoor soil factory, um, 
it's just a little bit less gross. I'll, when I'm done with this bucket, uh, I'll rinse it all out in the bathtub probably, or I'll take it downstairs to our courtyard and um, spray it out with the hose down there. Um, this is some garbage. Uh, it is a brown paper bag from Grow NYC's uh, Regional Greens Project. And this is the perfect thing. I had some cornmeal. I transferred it into a into a, a jar so I don't get bugs. And now I have this excellent thing. I was going to recycle it, but now I can use it in my boat wash. So I'm just going to lay it on the bottom here. You can see, this is no big deal. Okay, I'm just putting it on the bottom. And before we put in any waste, we're gonna put in some bran first. So everything's gonna be going in layers into our bucket. And in fact, we can probably put this bag in there too. I didn't even need to go get a bag. <laughs> so here's my extra Bokashi for the next, the, my Bokashi brand for the next time I go to fill the bucket. And I'll just keep it here near where I'm keeping my bucket. Okay, I've put some bran on the bottom to get everything started. Okay, now this bran um, is full of dormant and microorganisms and um, some molasses for food so that they multiply and then the bran makes a really nice matrix. Um, there's a couple of companies in different states I know I've heard of that uh, some like um, you can get like spent grains from your local brewery and all that kind of stuff. If you're a home brewer, you can use your spent, spent grains. So all that's really cool. All right, here is my kitchen waste. Uh, it's a couple of days of kitchen waste. It's got some skins. Now, you can put giant chunks of things in your Bokashi bucket. Hi, Diesel. You can put giant chunks of things into your Bokashi bucket if you want. Just know that it will take longer for them to ferment thoroughly, and then it will take longer for them to decompose in the ground. Uh, if you want fast decomposition, which I personally do, it's best to break things up a little bit. So, um, like, this is the biggest thing I'm going to put in here. <laughs> My dog would very much prefer that I feed it to him. It is a crust of Jaegers. <laughs> Stop it. Sit. Stay. Good boy. Um, we have some rice. Okay. And then you can see some heels of bread that got too hard for me to eat and too hard for my son to eat. Oh, and some eggshell and um, coffee grounds. Ray for Bustello. So now I'm gonna put a little bit more of the Bokashi brand on top of it, okay? So it's got like a little sandwich of the garbage, your food waste is sandwiched between the brand, the brand layers, okay? And the next time we come on in, we'll put in a little bit of brand and then more food waste, and then some more bran. And I've just sort of limited maybe four teaspoons fulls of that. You can see it just sort of a light coverage, okay? Now I'm gonna press it all down with the lid. Again, you wanna get as much air out as possible. So you can use your weight. I'm just pressing it down. And now I'm going to screw on my lid and my Bokashi bucket has been started. Um, I'm going to be keeping it in here over in this corner of the uh, dining area um, just because I do actually have a, a, I'm very lucky I live in a three bedroom apartment and I have a third bedroom, but it's a little too full of my ex-husband's stuff. Gonna get some of that out, and I'll have a space to put my Bokashi bucket. 
Um, this is going to be our soil factory. Now, if I lived in the suburbs or if I had an outdoor garden, when my bucket was when my bucket is full, you'll put we'll put our last layer of food waste into it, and then we'll let it sit for about 10 days because that last layer will need to ferment before we can add it to soil um, and have it turn into more soil. Um, that's why they give you two buckets. While your first bucket fills and ferments, you're still eating, you're still making kitchen waste. So you need to be able to start your second bucket while your first bucket ferments. Um, so people who have outdoor gardens, if you're lucky enough to have an outdoor garden, you can take your fully fermented bokashi, dig a trench directly in your garden and dump the bokashi in there. Let it sit for a couple of weeks while it, while it decomposes and then you can plant your plants there and it'll be fantastic. Um, I don't have that. So I'm gonna be doing what they call an indoor soil factory. Um, like I said, I grow a lot of plants and that means I have a lot of old dead soil. Um, I usually, I've been starting to add it to the tree pits outside because I can't stand the idea that soil might go to waste. But one of the cool things about Bokashi is that you can use it to refresh and regenerate um, and make more potting soil. Um, so I am going, I have here, um, this is just a 20 gallon tote I got from Target. Um, and this is some of my old soil from old plants that have passed on. You can see it's pretty, it's pretty uh, weak. So I'm just gonna keep keeping it in here. Um, this is partially so I can now just take the time to wash out all my different pots. Um, I'm actually gonna take these rocks back out as much as I can. Um, but this soil will kind of provide this, it's like a seed almost. What you need to do is you need to add the, the fermented waste to a little bit of so uh, with a little bit of soil, and that soil kind of almost acts like a seed, even if it's dead soil. Um, inviting, it help, helping invite the correct microbes in. Because once that anaerobic process is done, now once you add it to the soil, you're going into an aerobic process, and soil microbes love the air. Um, plants need air in their roots to survive, not just in their leaves. So, all right. There's still some stones in there. Here's a little more. So this is great. Now that I have a place to put this old dead soil, I've freed up my two planters. I can, uh, give them a wash and get them ready for new plantings. Um, I have some seeds coming. Uh, that should be fun. And for the time being, that is it. I'll be continuing to fill up my Bokashi bucket. If I think I have any liquid, I'll make a video of draining off the liquid. Um, but if not, I'll see you when it's time to put in the last bit of the bucket and again when it's time to add it to the soil factory. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to learn about this awesome technology. Um, I hope you'll enjoy coming on this experiment and adventure with me. And um, let's see what happens. I don't even know what's gonna happen. I'm excited to find out. Okay. <laughs>